why did you decide to get involved in psychedelic society? Um, I'm not kind of. It's the only time in my life that I felt like uh, the room that I was in was like a spaceship to go somewhere else. What the fuck is the bucket doing? So this is uh, mapping out DMT hyperspace. I did my undergrad at Harvard, and then in 2020 came here to Oxford uh, to do my PhD, DPhil as they call it, uh, in neuroscience. Psychedelics uh, are incredibly valuable for a lot of people and have shown promise in treating things like depression, end-of-life anxiety, PTSD, substance use disorder. The, the rhythm of the uh, harp is actually like, it's consonant with the movements of the spirits. <laughs> the spirit? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. LSD is one of the strangest and most controversial substances known to science. I wish I could talk in Technicolor, or, or let you see, can you, did you say you can see it? There's some people who think that LSD is the greatest gift to mankind since Tutti Frutti ice cream. But there are many others who feel that LSD is bad news to the individual and to the world he lives in. Never take drugs. Drugs are really bad drop some acid, the whole world becomes clear to you. Don't do drugs. I've taken LSD 42 times. It hasn't done me any harm. Don't do drugs. We travelled to Oxford to meet the Oxford University Psychedelic Society, or OPS for short, a discussion group for medical research and public policy in psychopharmacology. They describe themselves as a community of researchers, artists and students who believe in the transformative potential of psychedelics. After a bit of research, we knew there was only one place to start. Hi, is it Kenneth? Yes, it is. Lovely to meet you. Lovely Great to meet you. Then. Come on in. Thank you. Please. There's a lot of there are a lot of paintings by various different uh, people in the house. What's the bucket for? That's a great question. I have not noticed that before. <laughs> um, I've never noticed that one, actually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is the bucket doing? Yeah. Would you say it's got a psychedelic house? It is. Yeah. Yeah. The house is named the Stardust Motel, but nobody says that because it's kind of cringe. Yeah. So, uh, so most people just abbreviate it as motel. But uh, yeah, I would say it's, I would say it's quite a psychedelic house. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people here um, have been to OPS events before, um, or are part of the committee. So OPS uh, is a uh, part of Oxford University, but it's also a society for the whole of Oxford and really for everybody else too. Um, so we do three different kinds of events. We do talks on everything from the science and the history to the art and culture of psychedelics. And we do healing events, so things like yoga, meditation, sound baths, and so on, uh, and parties. What is the stance that OPS has on psychedelics? Mm. So, I mean, OPS... Uh, uh, definitely advocates for uh, more research into uh, these substances uh, and also changes in the legislation. Um, so, for example, back in 2023, uh, we did this uh, Voices for Smarter Choices uh, protest in Parliament Square, uh, and uh, we advocated for three different things. Um, one is decriminalizing weed. Uh, the second is rescheduling psychedelics. What that means is right now, psychedelics are Class A drugs, um, which puts them in the same category as heroin. Um, it's a completely absurd, uh, you know, a law that not only the UK, but also a lot of other countries around the world have. We want to help change the legislation. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we also want to promote uh, more research. Um, uh, there's so much we still don't know yet about the therapeutic potential. Kenneth and OPS's campaigning won the support of MP Crispin Blunt, the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group for drug reform at the time. Why is it absurd that they're in the same um, bracket? Well, because Schedule A means, uh, Schedule 1 or Class A, Schedule 1 in the US, means that uh, drugs that are in that schedule do not have any recognized medical value. Uh, and that's just completely absurd. Like psychedelics uh, are incredibly valuable for a lot of people and have shown promise in treating things like depression, end of life anxiety, PTSD, substance use disorder. Um, a lot of the evidence is still very preliminary, but I think there's without a doubt like enough evidence now um, to support the fact that they do have recognized medical value. An international study has shown that a hallucinogenic drug, which is found in magic mushrooms, is helpful to patients suffering from depression. Why did you decide to get involved with the Psychedelic Society Oxford? I met Kenneth. 
yeah, I kind of am in, involved in psychedelic research already, and I also want, like, outside of my scientific work, like, yeah, the community, and also, like, the other aspects of psychedelic culture. Yeah, I don't just want to do the science, but I like the, the history and I like the spirituality aspects. And, yeah. Do you like the partying aspect? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You said the spirituality aspect. What does that mean? I mean, I think it means many things for many different people. I wouldn't say like psychedelics as therapeutic drugs are like the most similar to like our normal, you know, antidepressant. Uh, it does a lot of other things to your mind. And like the way that they seem to work is, is also through like the experience itself. So, like my experiences have taught me a lot about myself about like what i believe the nature of reality is what do you believe <clears throat> the nature of reality is it's a very good question i'm still <laughs> working through that one <laughs> uh, but you know like uh, years ago i had this experience on um lsd of like a very vivid feeling of like i am the universe perceiving itself which is a cliche but um it felt very real and it felt like all of a sudden the whole world around me was not just you know matter but like very much alive and thriving and yeah that intuition has like stuck with me since mm -hmm. uh, since that experience in like a very meaningful way like you see a tree and like it's not just a tree now it's like whoa that thing is like maybe conscious it's probably conscious it has feelings it has an experience of the world cool beautiful what would you say to some people who might say that maybe you thought that because you were on a hallucinogenic drug? Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, like I, I don't know what to tell you other than that. It doesn't really matter if an experience that you have is hallucinated or not. I mean, most of our experience is hallucinated anyway. Uh, it's all filtered through our mind. What Bobby said might sound crazy but it is one of the leading neurological and philosophical theories about how our minds work. I'll link this collection of philosophical papers in the description below. Why do you think that psychedelic drugs aren't part of the mainstream culture? Uh, it takes a lot to, you know, take a psychedelic trip. It's not, I mean, I think like there was always, yeah, there was the 60s of uh, recreational use. And I think we saw a lot of like the bad parts that came of that. The, the example that people come to um, with, with like something like LSD is like, you know, uh, you're going to think you can fly and jump out of a window. Like that happened in the Netherlands. Can you, uh, can you talk <laughs> us through yes. what this is? Uh, I was not involved in the making of this uh, dollar bill. <laughs> and I can see that it's, uh, it's redeemable for 1,000 real dollars or 10 grams of cat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the current exchange rate, in fact. Do you use psychedelic drugs? I do research on psychedelics and uh, I take them myself. Um, the, the two go hand in hand with each other. Yeah, I definitely do think that um, uh, having an experience of these substances from the first person perspective um, is kind of necessary for having a complete understanding um, of these drugs in general. And could you, could you maybe tell us about um, a story about you on psychedelics? <laughs> uh, well, um, Maybe the best story to tell is that, uh, so I, I, I mentioned earlier doing this um, psychedelic called Iboga. Um, so Sorry, this, uh, Iboga. 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 It's very, very useful for treating heroin addiction, actually. Um, like one of the most powerful antidotes we have in the world to heroin addiction is Iboga. Um, so it's very therapeutic. Um, and also on top of that, I mean, it does create these spiritual experiences that are kind of like those of classical psychedelics. Um, so I went to South America back in October um, to take Iboga um, with a Nima who was actually the first Western uh, Nima to ever be initiated uh, as a Nima, as a shaman, uh, by the Buiti people. So I went there, uh, became initiated basically into Buiti in the process. Uh, and it's like a really extraordinary experience. Um, it's the only time in my life that I felt like uh, the room that I was in was like a spaceship to go somewhere else. Um, there was this real feeling of like the spiritual plane being somewhere else and we are going to get you there with the evoga, basically. Um, so it was the evoga, but it was also like all of like the entire atmosphere of the place, you know, and all the ritual that went into it. Um, they play this very peculiar harp uh, in evoga with a very irregular rhythm. Um, and you can see that like the, the rhythm of the uh, harp is actually like, it's consonant with the movements of the spirits. <laughs> 
uh, you can see them kind of the spirit. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so well, that so I mean, most people uh, who sat in that ceremony um, saw spirits descend um, on the room. Um, they all manifested to us in like different forms, but uh, yeah, uh, these these spirits come. Yes, did they manifest themselves to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They. Uh, <laughs> um, so the first experience that I had um, uh, when the iboga came on was I had this feeling of uh, blue light um, passing through my body. Um, and apparently many other people report this as well. It's like kind of the iboga is doing like an x-ray on you sort of. Blue light went all the way from my head down to my feet. Um, and then uh, at some point later in the evening saw what looked like a bunch of black tadpoles um, squirming around the room. Okay. And you think that was a, a spirit? Uh, yes, I saw ghosts. No, uh, no, no, but I, I, yeah, I do think those are the, the spirits. And I, I, I genuinely very deeply believe that um, the spiritual cosmology is attached to different um, indigenous ways of taking psychedelics. I very much think that those are referring to um, uh, something real, like a, a different state of consciousness. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We wrapped up the interviews and got ready for what was happening next. <laughs> <laughs> Camera off. <laughs> hey guys, I just wanted to take a moment to ask you to like the video if you're enjoying it and drop it a dislike if you don't like it. But your guys' interaction with this video means a lot. We're trying to make more pieces like this piece, turn Culture Clash into a bit of a series, follow some interesting people, interesting subcultures, interesting movements. Um, and that simply won't be possible without your guys' support. Um, so a like, a subscribe, a comment, they're all really appreciated. Um, now, back to the interesting stuff. Kenneth invited us to OPS's end of term party, a psychedelic rave at the Bullingdon in Oxford. So we left his house and made our way there. My name is Matthew. I'm DJ Trax Guy. Trax Guy. T R A X S K Y. I love I love working with a lot of different tracks and blending them. And to me, the sky represents freedom, um, and freedom's a big thing for me. I thought I'd put the two words together and see where it goes. I like to pay, take people on a bit of a journey from, you know, from from tech house. They don't really know what they're going to get, and then before they know it, they're they're in the realms of techno but in such a way that it's really smooth and they don't even know how they got there. I DJed once at a illegal rave in a, in a forest and it was it was pretty chilly. So my girlfriend had um, one of these, you know, kimono. So she was like, yeah, use that. I've got a spare jacket. I put it on and I felt like it was just very comfortable. Psychedelics, I think, if used in the right context, are really beneficial. You know, I think when it's used in more of a party culture in a reckless way, it can be quite harmful. So. Yeah, just using using with caution. I've used psychedelics in a therapeutic context with somebody who was a trip setter for me. I was going through a difficult time, um, and I think it actually helped me to see new perspectives and to heal um, a lot quicker than than other things. So I was doing psychotherapy as well, and that was like a slow burn healing that took a long time, years of psychotherapy, and taking psychedelics in that instance made me feel like there was an acceleration towards healing. So. I think use, using psychedelics and psychotherapy can be hugely beneficial. Will we uh, be able to get up to the DJ booth with you? Absolutely. The, the more the merrier, so come and join me. I love it when people come and join me, so come and dance. Once we headed back in, I really started to embrace the environment and even made a new friend. His name was Thomas. Together with Thomas and on DJ Tracks Guy's orders, I probably showed the people of Oxford some of the best moves they've ever seen. Thomas and I shared this beautiful moment, captured by Nathan the cameraman, who I called up to the stage to get some shots of the rave from my perspective. Before we knew it, Thomas had managed to make another friend. We felt welcomed by the community and privileged to have met so many interesting people. What we didn't know at that point was that the catalogue of weird and wonderful characters had really only just begun.
It's my my nickname in Russian, Filka. My name is Filka. Spy, I L. Ignore that one. K A. Filka. Uh, what do you study? Mathematics. What do you think about mathematics? I think it's awesome, and it's the only thing I ever want to study or do in my life. There's nothing I'd rather do than maths. When I'm on a come down from a psychedelic experience, I always get visited by a witch, and she's a friendly witch. Every single psychedelic experience, every single time, she doesn't fail to come. She's always there. As the night progressed, it became impossible to ignore the strong sense of community. I mean, despite the fact that we were pointing a camera in people's faces, everyone was incredibly welcoming. I, I like meeting people at the roads. They're definitely experiences unlike any other. I don't think there's anything quite like going to a rave. Is there anything quite like going to a rave on psychedelics? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, it feels like an entire new world, I would say. It's like a journey, you know, you go, you meet so many interesting people. There is definitely a community of people who are open to the use of psychedelics. I feel like um, it attracts a very specific kind of person. There's a very specific sort of curiosity you have to have about the human mind and what sort of experiences you can have to try psychedelics. And I think that um, that community has maybe been one of my favorite parts of being involved with the Psychedelic Society, is meeting with these people who have had these interesting experiences, some of them not related to psychedelics, many of them related to psychedelics. You meet such fantastic people, yes. Um, people who um, are incredibly smart, uh, incredibly like spiritual as well, um, and uh, also people who just like, you know, enjoy dancing at raves uh, and having a good time. Uh, it's just, it's a fantastic, fantastic community. Uh, and I don't think there will ever be anything like it. Uh, again in my life, for sure. Like, oh, There's nothing I'd rather do than that.